just flow. Let's talk about it. Let's go through some ways God speaks. Let's talk about some hindrances to the voice of God. Maybe share some testimony. So I know I'm kind of jumping in, but I just feel fired up to be on with TJ. Every time me and him get together, I don't know. I feel a special fire. I get, fi I just feel the anointing whenever TJ's on here. And so I'm, I'm believing the Lord is going to speak to someone tonight. If you've been waiting for confirmation, if you've been waiting for the Lord to speak a word to you, even it, without us just saying it, get ready for God himself to speak to you. Maybe he'll, well, I know he'll speak through us, but I'm talking about encounters with God. I mean, you might even halfway through, the broadcast might have to go off because God just starts speaking to you and you get into prayer. So that's what we're believing for, guys. Episode 100 and what is it, guys? Type it in the chat. 72 of the Revival Lifestyle Podcast. Now, TJ, I was looking back. You were on episode, I don't even remember. I think you were on like episode two or three, maybe, maybe five. You were on in 2020. We've been doing this together. I think you were, I think you're the most guest I've had on. You or Jenny Weaver, maybe you guys are tied for the for the most episodes on. And every time you're on, bro, it's powerful. The chat loves you. My following loves you, my community. So thank you so much for being on tonight. I'm honored to have you on. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome night. So my good buddy TJ is here. We're gonna talk about hearing the voice of God. And I'm praying tonight that God would give you ears to hear his voice. I am praying, Lord, give me ears so I can hear your voice. I, TJ, I don't want to miss the voice of God. I don't want to miss a word God is speaking. It's possible the Holy Spirit has been speaking to people tonight and we've missed what God is saying. We've ignored the voice of God. We've disobeyed the voice of God. So tonight, such a crucial topic. It feels like a very, for most people, mysterious topic. It feels like a very confusing topic for most people. So hopefully tonight, we can simplify it a little bit because it's actually not mysterious as you guys might think and it's actually not complicated as you guys might think and so hopefully tonight we bring some clarity and some um some simplicity to hearing the voice of god what are your thoughts on some of this tj yeah i think it's important to hear god speak uh just because it gives us an extreme advantage in life come on that's one of the great advantages we have as believers born again believers in Jesus Christ is we have access to the voice of God what a wonderful uh trick up our sleeves that we have what a wonderful advantage what a, a, a wonderful thing to be able to partake of the Bible says in Romans 8 14 they that are led by the Spirit of God these are the sons of God it's part of your birthright in redemption to have access to God's leading. God wants to lead you as his child. I have a son. You have uh, four kids, Isaiah, and you know how it is. Like, as your kids are growing up, you want to be their leader because you're their father. You want them to come to you for advice. You want them to come to you for counsel. You want them to come to you uh, w when they have a question. You want them to come to you when they're at a gridlock or a fork in the road. Well, God put that in us as parents because it's the very sentiment that he has for us. He wants to lead us. The Bible says, they that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. I want you to write that in the comments section. God's leading is my birthright. Mm. God's leading is my birthright. The Bible says in John chapter 10 that my sheep, Jesus speaking, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Come on. And if you read Psalm 23, which would be the Old Testament equivalent to John 10, when Jesus is talking about himself being the good shepherd, in Psalm 23, the verse starts by saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I will not lack. There's a way to live in life where you're not in lack, where you're not confused, where you're not distressed, where you're not running around like a chicken without its head, where you're not living life by trial and error, but there's a knowing in your spirit that you're following the leading of God's voice, and because of it, I know my tomorrow's going to be all right, because mm. God will never lead you backwards. God will never lead you in circles. God will always lead you upward and forward. The path of the just shines brighter and brighter unto that perfect day. The Bible says that as we behold him and his voice, as in a mirror, we are transformed from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. And I think um, if you're really going to have a desire to seek to hear God speak, and to get his counsel, you have to first and foremost resolve in your spirit tonight that I trust God's heart and intentions. So 
for my life. I trust that he has the best way for me. I trust that he's not some sadistic, twisted, weirdo God that has some up and down and all around trajectory for my life, but he has a clean path laid out for me that if I follow it, it will lead me by still waters, like the Bible says, and he'll make me to lie down in green pastures. Be convinced that God loves you tonight enough to lead you and guide you and direct you. The Bible says the Lord your God teaches you to profit and he'll lead you in the way that you should go. You have to be convinced of the love of God because perfect love casts out all fear. People are afraid today more than ever, Isaiah. People are afraid because there's uncertainty in our world. There's all kinds of trouble and tribulation which Jesus prophesied would happen. But the, remember in John 16, 24, the, uh, John 16, 33, the scripture says in this world you'll have trial and tribulation, but God gives us almost like not a way out of the trial and tribulation, but he gives us a way to navigate through it all. He says, take heart, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And if you'll allow me to be your master and your leader and you'll follow my guidance, I'm telling you, I'll lead you in a way that you didn't know existed before. That's so good. And I want to also tell everybody watching this, the voice of God only comes by the grace of God. There are many of you in the chat right now that don't think you deserve to hear the voice of God. Isaiah, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not anointed enough. And I feel this in my spirit tonight, TJ. There's people that think they're not anointed, called, gifted, or, or attractive enough, or you know, have the talents to hear God's voice as if God himself is disinterested in you, as if God doesn't have a plan for you. I wanna let every single person watching this know that the voice of God is not because of what you've done, it's because of what Christ has done. The Bible says that you were at war with God, that you were separated with God, that there was a wall, a chasm between you and God. But because of the shed blood of Jesus, the Bible says at now you are at peace with God. Because of what Christ did, he's reconciled you back to God. Guys, you could not hear the voice of God before Christ. Before what Jesus did on the cross, how could a sinner like you be reconciled back to a holy and righteous God that can't look upon sin? But you got to realize in the same way, TJ, the blood of Jesus comes by grace. In the same way, forgiveness of sin comes by grace. In the same way, deliverance, miracles, spiritual gifts, they come by grace, meaning I can't earn it. The voice of God comes by grace. The Lord has a desire to speak to you regardless of what you've done, regardless of who you've done, regardless of where you've done it. The voice of God is coming and wants to speak to you and wants to direct, as TJ said, direct your life. And so God, I believe that you desire to speak to me. Here's the problem. A lot of you have been taught that it's abnormal to hear the voice of God. So you're not even expecting to hear God. You've been taught that you're not, it's not supposed to be normal to hear God. And sadly, I have to say from a lukewarm pastor that doesn't hear God and has now told you, oh, I don't hear God. So it's normal for you not to hear God. And I want to come against that demonic lie that a pastor has taught you that it's normal to not hear the voice of God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a believer, if you are a sheep, it is normal to hear the voice of God. It is normal to hear the shepherd. How could we live our life? How could we walk out our destiny? How do we know where to go, what to do, who to marry, uh, how to govern our, our life and how to live without hearing the directing voice of God? TJ, let's go basic here. How can you have a relationship with somebody when you don't hear their voice? How could you have a, and guys, we're gonna show you tonight, when we're talking about the voice of God, we are not just talking about an audible voice or a still small voice, which God can do both of those. We are talking about the multiple ways God speaks in scripture. We are talking about the multiple, the multifaceted aspect and nature of God that God can speak through music, God can speak through preachers, God can speak through the word, God can speak through nature. Do you guys know, I shared this last night, TJ, nature declares the glory of God. Nature praises and nature preaches. The Bible says in the book of Romans, nobody has an excuse. Why does no one have an excuse to not believe in God? This is what the Bible says, because creation testifies to the reality of God. So literally we give testimonies at church. Do you guys know trees give testimony? Do you guys know planets give testimony? I believe last night the solar eclipse was a glorious thing. It was a beautiful thing. It was, it was creation testifying. 
God is real. I saw the solar eclipse as the Lord saying, I'm real, I'm good, I'm powerful, look at what I can do. So these things testify and preach God is alive, God is real. So let me ask you guys this. If God can speak through trees, if God can speak through creation, if God can speak through, why can't God speak to me? Why can't God speak through me? Why can't God use me? Doesn't 2 Corinthians chapter 5 say you're his ambassador? And then it says, as if God himself was speaking through you. So here's here's one thing I want to add. And man, we, are, we have so much to cover. I, TJ, I want to hear the voice of God so I can speak the voice of God. Somebody type in the chat, I want to speak the voice of God. Do you understand all can prophesy and prophecy is speaking words from God? So it's essential tonight. I want to really open up your mind. I'm not just hearing God for me. TJ, that's not o the only reason. It's not just so I know what to do with my life, but I want to speak for God. I want to speak the voice of God. I want God to use my mouth as a trumpet, my tongue as a sword. I want to declare the works of God. I want to speak boldly. I want, I want the power of God to be released through my mouth. So how could I speak for God if I don't hear from God? So it's, it's bigger than just you tonight. Don't come in here thinking, I need to hear God about my job, my wife. Great, and you and you will, and God will. But I also, TJ, want to hear God so I can speak his word, so that my unsafe family can hear God. My, your unsafe family, they do not want to watch my videos. They're like, his veins pop out, he's all sweaty, he's weird. So how are they going to hear God if they're not going to hear it through a preacher like me or a preacher like TJ? You're going to speak forth the word of God to them. And how are you going to speak? Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say. So I, TJ, I only want to preach and, and say what I hear the Lord saying, what I hear Jesus speaking to me. And so the Holy Spirit wants to speak. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to you. And there are many things that we're going to talk about that are hindering the voice of God. Let me say this last thing and I'll toss it over you. We can go in any direction. I believe this, that God desires to speak to every single person. That's right. I believe right now, and we, we, we don't have time tonight, but we could even show you a bunch of scriptures where God speaks to unbelievers as well, where God spoke to wicked unbelievers in dreams and visions. So, okay, if God can speak to wicked unbelievers, God wants to speak to you if you're a Christian tonight. And I believe every single one of you not only can hear God, but I believe actually God has been speaking to you. And if you haven't heard his voice, oh man, I feel the Holy Ghost. The issue is not God. The issue is not God. If you're not hearing God, I'm not trying to condemn you because this is a hopeful message tonight. It's a message of grace, but we can't blame God. It's It could be because I don't have ears to hear. What do we see over and over in scripture, TJ? Those that have ears to hear, let them hear what the spirit is saying to the church. So if we look at the church, God says, I'm not the problem. I am speaking and you need to have ears to hear what the spirit of God is saying to the church. So God, I need those ears. I need my ears to be up like antennas in the spirit to pick up the sound wave. Guys, do you know right now there are radio waves going on above your head? Literally right now above your house, there are radio waves in the air. And now can you hear those? Of course not. But if you have the right antenna, you can put your antennas up, which this is old school here. Some young people are like, what's an antenna? You can put your antennas up and pick up what's already being spoken in the air. In the same way, God is speaking. His voice is declaring and going forth. I got to tune into the right station. I got to remove the distractions of TikTok and social media. How are you going to hear God when Netflix has been talking to you all week? How are you going to hear God when hours and hours of TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and right wing and left wing and this wing? So we really need tonight. Thank you, Lord, that tonight people are going to tune in. God, I want to tune into the right station. I've been, TJ, I've been on the wrong station. I've been listening to the wrong preachers. If you're listening to those preachers that tell you God doesn't speak, uh, miracles aren't for today. Deliverance isn't for today. Ladies and gentlemen, you are on the wrong station. You are listening to people talk you out of the voice of God tonight. Thank you, Lord, that he's breaking out his voice. Man, I feel fired up, bro. I feel fired up right now.